بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم جمعن میل لکس فار میل لکنستان دستنگوش سپیکرز کانسلرز برادرز و سسترز کامریدز و فرنز السلام علیکم و رحمت الله علیکم و السلام I can't tell you the joy I feel of the size of this crowd rallying for democracy in Tower Hamlets, in defense of democracy against its besiegers. May look for Ken Livingston and I have at least two things in common. We were all expelled from the Labour Party. <laughs> we were all expelled from the Labour Party for standing up for Labour values. <laughs> and we all defeated New Labour over and over again. <laughs> Proving that real Labour values can get you elected and as the opinion poll this morning shows, abandoning real labor values almost certainly guarantees defeat. But we are making a stand here in defense of the progress we have made here in this borough. Just exactly what did Mayor Ludford do wrong? He presides over some of the best schools in the whole of the United Kingdom, in the poorest borough. Yeah. Yeah. He gives a school lunch free to every single school child of primary age, unlike any other borough in the country. Yeah. He provides an education maintenance allowance to keep young people at school so they can attain better grades and go on to better university degrees and professions. He has a house building program in a country where there's scarcely a house affordable to working people being built. These are labor values. Labor should be beating a path to Mayor Ludford's door and asking him to sprinkle some of his stardust <laughs> over them instead of expelling him, witch hunting him, and trying to drive him from office. I can dispose of the fat controller. <laughs> onions, pickles. I can dispose of him in one sentence. Eric Pickles has launched this attack for racist, Islamophobic reasons of UK and the Tory right. Enough about him. He's not worthy of more. The real scandal in this witch hunt, starting from the Panorama program until this very evening in the media in advance of this rally, is the sordid, shameful, disgraceful part that Labour has played in this whole affair. It's true, as Jalal said, if I hadn't been elected here with the support of many of you, though not him, he politely reminded us, if I hadn't been elected here, there would never have been a Bengali member of parliament in this I promised to serve only one term and to make way for a Bengali MP. And we got one. But by God, we got the wrong Bengali. <laughs> <laughs> they've got a death wish, these people. Really, they've got a death wish. Yes. First of all, they backed the Iraq war when 80% of the people in the borough were vehemently against it. They paid a price, and what do they do next? They join a racist, Islam-hating witch hunt against the most popular 
and best mayor in the country, look for yeah. Ramos. Yeah. So, I don't know if Rushanara <laughs> has forgotten what happened to her former employer. But I tell you this, if Tower Hamlet's first doesn't put up a parliamentary candidate against her in May, respect will come back and we will yeah. Because these people, Jalal was right in that wonderful speech he just gave. These people have to learn that they need you. It's not you that needs them, it's they who need you. And we taught them a lesson once and we may just have to teach them a lesson again. Yeah. 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 Ready to do that. Look for Raman. Got mass support. He's been elected not once, but twice. The only people entitled to remove Look for Raman are the people of Tower Hamlets yeah. and nobody else. associated with this meeting tonight and with any ongoing campaign. I've been on the BBC and elsewhere tonight defending the mayor. Yeah. The yeah. fact that Ken Livingston Labour's most popular London-wide yeah. political figure until today yeah. is yeah. here in this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Christine was right. It's never too late. They can ask Luch for back, yes. as they were forced to ask Ken back. Me, I don't want to come back. <laughs> but they should ask Luch for back. And if they don't, we'll make them eat what they've done to look for Raman these last 12 months or so. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. onto London Borough Councils. And one person we worked with in town Hamlets was Graham Allen, now a Labour MP. And in his ward, which I think was from Catherine's, we finally got two Bangladeshis elected, 11 years after the rest of London had come to terms with that change and started to reflect it. Something like that doesn't happen if you haven't got the indelible history of racism within that Labour body. A disgrace when you think back to the courage of George Lansbury, the stand against fascism. Somewhere in that post-war period, the Labour Party in Tower Hamlets turned inward and uh, had a disgraceful record. And we carried on that fight to break through. And in 1986, at uh, that election, we suddenly saw a real array of Bangladeshi candidates standing here in Tower Hamlets. What did the Labour leadership of this council do? They stood against the Labour Party as independents and they took enough votes to allow the Liberals to win and rule this borough for eight years. And I have to tell you this, if David Steele was here today, 
and he was the leader of the Liberal Party at the time, he told you, those eight years of that Liberal rule were a bloody embarrassment to the Liberal Party, <laughs> because they carried on that policy of excluding the Bangladeshi community, and, and in, I met council officers, found it intolerable, working here in this borough, where you had a Liberal council for eight years, broadly excluding the Bangladeshi community. And then Labour came back to power in 1994, and it wasn't as bad as the past. But what they did was a sort of divide and rule in the Bangladeshi community. I worked very closely with Kumar Murshi, who was a councillor here, and he was one of my main supporters in my campaign for mayor. And he was emerging as clearly a strong candidate to be the leader of Tower Hamlet's Council, at the same time as being one of my mayoral advisors. What happened? He's suddenly accused of corruption and rescued and charged, set up. Two years later, he's acquitted of this. But of course, the Labour Party had removed him and suspended him, thus eliminating a good, independent-minded Bangladeshi who had been a great leader of this borough. And we had to wait until Luk Rahman became the leader of this borough in 2008 to have someone who was standing there and independent, not manipulated by that little clique that still run the Labour group on the council, I'm afraid. Yes. I remember what Kumar Murphy said there. He said, you can get on as a Bangladeshi in town, and it's once you've been house trained. Well, look, has not been house trained. And that's why <laughs> they, they, they were getting in. Christine's talked about the lies. I, I got elected to the NEC about a week after that event, so I wasn't there for it. But it was clearly a disgrace. And instead of excluding Lucifer, we should have been investigating the people that put that tissue of lies together. And still it's not available to the public because look, we'll be able to make a lot of money in the libel courts <laughs> by challenging them in all of that. So where are we now in all of this? I, I don't have the slightest doubt that Lucifer's record is outstanding. And I know this from, as, as George was just touching on and others. It's a, a record that any Labour authority in Britain should be proud of, and it's a lot better than very many other Labour councils up and down the country. Yeah. And yet there are problems. And yet there are problems. The PricewaterhouseCooper have identified problems in our homes. They didn't identify any problems in the world's banks when they were betting. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you one of the problems is, there is an obscene coalition in Tower Hamlet's council chamber, an unofficial coalition between Labour and the Tories to block the things that look at us. Who's all? They've not even been able to appoint a chief executive. Why? Because that obscene Labour-Tory coalition has blocked the appointment of a chief executive. And of course, that count creates problems. And equally, we've got the media. I, I mean, I have to say, look, uh, there's nothing unusual in what they're doing to you. They lie about all of us. I, mean, if, I always say, if the only paper you read was the Daily Mail or the Daily Telegraph or the Evening Standard, all you'd know about Ken Livingston that I was corrupt, alcoholic, anti-Semitic, violent tax dodger. And, do you know, when we came to examine those swing voters who tragically are inclined to be Labour but voted for Boris, they were twice as likely to be readers of the Evening Standard. I mean, we've got seven out of ten of all the papers people read in this country owned by five billionaires. Murdoch, Rothermere, and the Barclay brothers. <laughs> all of them will do anything possible to rent a socialist, whether it's at local council or certainly coming through to be the leader of the Labour Party. And how can you have free and fair elections when people are lied to massively and systematically by our media? One day we have to change the laws about our media so that you stop these billionaires just lying and lying and lying. But it, what's good about being a council leader uh, or a mayor in a borough like this is you can communicate with the people. They know. Look at that. This is one of the biggest meetings I've been to for a very long time. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And it can get me along, but Christine and I will place a motion before Labour's NEC shortly when all these smears have been demolished for the readmittance of Lock Barabin as a Labour mayor here in this borough. Finally, I want to say this. I, I'm struck by similarities with 30 years ago. Because, I mean, I went through the sort of media abuse that a look was going through. But do you remember there was this woman called Margaret Thatcher who abolished the phrase London Council? <laughs> <laughs> you know why they abolished it? Because we were fighting the things that they were doing. The policy of destroying our manufacturing industry, the ban on building council housing, demanding change to end sexism and racism and homophobia. And the result was the Tory party under Thatcher abolished a whole council and left a complete gap. That's effectively what they found a new way of doing with these commissioners. And these commissioners, if they take this job, should be ashamed of themselves. I say this, fight on all fronts. Look for my advice, get a bloody good lawyer and take Eric Pickles to call and yeah. judge. Turn up, find out where they live, and then have a peaceful demonstration outside their homes so their neighbours know these are the sort of people who turn out and overturn a democratic election. Yeah. Yeah. Fight them, expose them, make certain everybody knows what they're doing. This is an appalling situation. Look, I was re-elected six months ago. How dare they do this? I mean, as somebody earlier said, Eric Pibbles don't like it, come and stand. Yeah. 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 He won't. I don't have the slightest doubt that Lufa will come through this, that we will see the re-election of Lufa, hopefully, um, if Christine and I can persuade our colleagues on the NEC, as Labour's candidate for mayor at the next election. Yeah. We can all be proud of it. Look for good luck. Thank you very much.